About seven years ago, I was walking down this vibrant stretch of South Street in Philadelphia, and I popped into this shop. As usual, it was mostly filled with vintage clothes and novelty drinking glasses, but there, on a shelf to the left, was this. An old mandolin. It was in pretty rough shape, it had no strings or tuners, and there was a big split down the middle. It was being sold as a decorative object. So I bought it for $13. When I got home, I poured about half a bottle of wood glue into the crevices. I bought new tuners, which weirdly cost four times the price of the instrument itself. And after about a week, I had a pretty nice sounding mandolin on my hands. Of course, the plan was to really learn how to play it, but the strings really hurt my fingers. So instead, I put it on the shelf and I forgot about it for years. Even after I started a YouTube channel that focuses on old instruments, I somehow continued to neglect it. Well, the other day, I heard a terrible noise coming from where it sits on the shelf. The sound of one of its wooden panels coming unglued. The truth is, this mandolin is crumbling. It was never a high-quality instrument, and now, after a hundred years, it's finally about to implode from the intense pressure of the strings. There's a whole world of instruments that's held together by nothing more than wood glue. It's up to the people who own them to notice when they're falling apart and give them a new lease on life. So of course my first order of business is to take the strings off. Now that that's done, I'm gonna open the lid with a knife. I've never done this before and it's a little bit scary because the wood is really thin. It'd be really easy to just destroy the whole thing with this blade. Okay, time to take the lid off. As you can see, the front is in multiple pieces. Now that we've got this thing open, it's a good time to take a look at the label. It's a Stella mandolin. Stella was a brand made by Oscar Schmidt. They were made in nearby New Jersey and sold via mail order catalogs. For the first few decades of the 20th century, Oscar Schmidt was the biggest manufacturer of musical instruments in the US. Here's a listing that shows a very similar instrument. By the way, if you want to see one of these that hasn't been neglected for a hundred years, I found this reverb listing. They have it listed as being from the 20s or 30s, which seems about right. Okay, let's get back to our patient. So the first thing I need to fix is the neck. You see this gap here? I didn't even know about that, but it's definitely not supposed to be there. I'm just gonna paint some glue in, and then I'm gonna clamp it. Okay, 24 hours have passed. It's time to glue the lid on. I'm gonna start by putting glue on the middle piece. And now I'm just gonna fit it into place. I'm gonna try to glue these support beams that go all the way across as well. Basically my plan is to use as much glue as I can get into this thing. Just gonna reposition this I really hope I don't glue this off center. Next, I'm gonna cover the tops of the beams with glue. This should help hold the two sides in place. I'm also gonna put glue along the rim in preparation for putting the right side on. Speaking of which, let's attach that right side. The right side has its own little cross beam, which I have to glue and then clamp I'm not going to tighten this too much because I don't want to push one of the frets into the fretboard. I'm just going to wipe off some of this excess glue. This hammer is pretty heavy. I'm going to use it to weigh down the lid so that it dries in the correct position. And I'm going to slide in the other panel. Now all I have to do is clamp it. This is going to be a challenge. One of the hardest things to do is to clamp an object with a round back. It seems like pretty much every kind of vice that exists is made for working with right angles. I think I'm going to try to use a bungee cord. Okay, another 24 hours have passed. As you can see, I ended up swapping out the big bungee cord for two tiny bungee cords. Anyway, it looks like it dried in the right position. Next, I'm gonna reattach the tuning heads. These go in quite easily. Basically, you just push them through the holes and then screw them in from the back. Now, all that's left to do is string it up. 
By the way, if you've maybe seen a mandolin that looks like this, then you may be wondering why this instrument looks different. It seems there are three or four different shapes of mandolins. There's the A style, the F style, and then this, which is called the bullback mandolin. Nowadays, the A and the F styles are much more popular, but this is actually the original shape that the instrument had when it was first invented in the 18th century in Italy. Obviously, this painting is not from the 18th century, but you get the point. Anyway, I think it's finally time to try this thing out. Should we do the Super Mario test? I think it sounds great. Just for fun, let's see how the same thing sounds on the Domra. The Domra is, of course, the same instrument, but with only one string for each open note. It sounds pretty different. Let's switch back to the mandolin. I'm just going to record a basic chord progression on my computer. For those of you who don't know, the thing that gives the mandolin its characteristic sound is that it has two strings for every open note. The magic comes when the two strings are very slightly out of tune with each other. It gives this beautiful sort of tragic chorus effect. Let's add some drums into the mix. Maybe a synth bass? I found this bell loop, which seems to fit really nicely. Okay, so let's talk about sampling. You may have noticed that a few months ago, I released a sample library of this very instrument. I'm really proud of that library. I think it sounds really nice. It contains a faithful recording of the plucked sound of this instrument. One thing that's noticeable with the mandolin is the shape of its sound. You get this loud pluck at the start, and then immediately after that, it gets super soft. So it's really only loud for like a second. To get around this, mandolin players often use this trick. Instead of playing a note one time, they played the same note over and over again really fast so that it could kind of sustain. This sound, which is called tremolo, was missing from my initial version of the sample library, and I really wanted to add it. Well, as it happens, last week I was working on a revised version of my Omnichord sample library. As part of that, I coded a bunch of functionality into Decent Sampler that allows me to embed sequences of notes into the sample libraries. In that case, the sequences were the chords of the Omnichord. Well, I was able to use that same system to add tremolo to this library. Check it out. and you can change the speed right here. Of course, in general, this sound is only used for single note melodies. However, I discovered a cool thing, which is that if you turn down the speed and then play a few notes at the same time, you get these beautiful sort of hypnotic loops. Every time I trigger the chord, it sounds a little bit different. because I'm hitting the keys at slightly different rhythms. You get a different effect every time. Playing with this is incredibly addictive. I had to actually close down Ableton in order to force myself to finish this video. I just couldn't stop myself from messing with it. So anyway, I'm really excited to hear what you all do with this. Make sure you download the latest version of Decent Sampler because that's the only version that has this functionality. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Also, if for some reason you're not subscribed, now is a great time. It's free, and if you ding the bell, you'll be notified anytime I make a new video. The sample library in this video is completely free. You can download it over at Decent Samples. The cool Omnichord sample library I was showing before is available to patrons. Speaking of which, if you really want to support the work I do, both videos and samples, a great way of doing that is by joining the Patreon. It costs $5 a month, and every month you get an exclusive sample library just for patrons. 
Okay, I think that's it. See you next time.